I'm Paul Farmer, and I'm Chief of the Division of Global Health and Social Medicine, and a member of the Infectious Disease Division as well. You know, the term global health equity, um, we didn't come up with that ourselves. Uh, a group of people uh, working in settings that are these days called settings, uh, resource poor settings, settings of privation, I'm trying to think, well, if we're working on global health and we also mean medical care, what, what's our aspiration here? And the aspiration is to equitable medical care. So if you're working in a place like rural Haiti in the 80s and you don't have a hospital and the staff you need, laboratories that you need, uh, the goal has to be you're providing services and strengthening a healthcare system, but you have the aspiration of really excellent uh, medical care for everyone who might come into your, um, into your purview. The mission of the division is to understand health disparities. You know, why do some people get sick while others remain well? Once sick, why are the courses of people's illness so very different? And also, at the same time, to address those disparities. And, uh, and that has led us uh, to dozens of countries across the world where we have engaged in long-term work, training, uh, building local capacity, and then building facilities and conducting research. So the mission of the division is very much the mission of the Brigham and Women's Hospital. That is to take care of patients, to train others to do so and better, and to generate new knowledge while doing that work. And, uh, and so that was recognized early on here at the Brigham and Women's Hospital uh, to be central to the mission of the hospital overall, and that's how the division was born. You know, the philosophy of care uh, that our faculty and trainees engage is really quite similar to what we learn here at the Brigham Women's Hospital. Many of us have trained here. And that is, yes, we're, we're, we're working in a place that is characterized by privation. You know, no electricity, no water, not enough staff. But at the same time, we're going to provide care that is at the highest standard that we can while pushing up those standards. And so even though the, you know, if you're in the middle of a, a rural uh, and disrupted region of Rwanda after genocide and war, and there is no hospital, then you take care of people while building the hospital. And, uh, and that, that's something um, we're spared when we're on service here at the Brigham Women's Hospital. In our experience in Haiti, Rwanda, Malawi, Lesotho, Sierra Leone, Liberia, even Peru and parts of Russia, we've had to take on these other uh, subjects that are really not in the purview of, of everyday medical care. In a lot of uh, the departments, divisions, and clinics here, you know, you ask the question, well, why did this person come to choose our group to provide his or her care? That happens in our line of work as well. But as a rule, we're not in competition with any other formal medical or very few formal medical institutions. And what we've found uh, in, I'm trying to think if there's any exception, what we've found is that people are, are hungry for what they identify as good care. Unfortunately, a lot of our patients, most of them, are already sick, um, so we, we have to push ourselves to do more on prevention, um, but they choose us and come to receive care from us uh, in large part because they think the quality of it is going to be better what they'd get elsewhere. What's special about our division, uh, a couple things come to mind. One is the, the quality of the faculty and trainees. We, uh, we are a very heterogeneous division compared to many others. Uh, for example, <clears throat> in the Department of Medicine, this is one of the places where you have faculty who are surgeons and pediatricians and um, epidemiologists so it's not just internists, uh, and they do amazing work uh, from Chile to, you know, Upper West Africa, in Navajo Nation here in Boston, um, and I mentioned some of the other places in which we work. It, they're uh, an amazing and wonderful and committed group of people who all have other obligations as well. Um, you know, you're lucky if you get to work full time, as I am, uh, in global health, uh, because our patients are not paying for those services, we're finding other means to finance them. And another, another thing that's special about the division is there are more and more divisions like this across the country, but I think very few of them have um, a Brigham and Women's Hospital standing behind them. And the Brigham has always uh, supported 
um, this work financially, uh, morally, logistically. The applicant pool is enriched by people seeking to do their clinical training here at the Brigham because they know it's, uh, you know, it's a high priority. A few of the recent accomplishments of the division um, that worth, are worth mentioning just as they come to mind. Um, well, we've just celebrated our 10th anniversary of the country's first global health equity residencies. We're also working in um, collaboration with colleagues at Harvard Medical School and in Rwanda, uh, and we're about to have our first graduating class of a university that we founded together in Rwanda, and next month we'll go there for that graduation of the first master's degree class. Um, and that, that strikes me as noteworthy. We have training programs in Haiti, Rwanda, Dubai, Russia, uh, and they're all collaborative. Uh, and, uh, and so I think our trainees get a very rich sense of how things are done all over the world and also what we might not do so well uh, that's done better elsewhere. They, they, they tend to have enough in-depth experience that could, is drawn out over years uh, to be able to learn those lessons and disseminate them. So everybody is working on major research projects and this is a division that's been built up over the last dozen years and so we've al also been able to follow the course of these research efforts over those years. Just to name a couple that I think are uh, noteworthy. Um, one of our faculty, Neil Gupta, who's been working in Rwanda for some years uh, along with his wife who's a pediatrician and also a member of our division, has started a test and treat program to use new therapies for hepatitis C in Rwanda. I mean, another um, pressing question that has, a, that has escaped uh, world attention for all too long, how do we treat drug-resistant tuberculosis? How do we diagnose drug-resistant tuberculosis and avoid the wrong therapies? For many decades, the patients that we've been seeing with, with this disease are critically ill with highly infectious strains and no new medications on the horizon until very recently when two more medications were developed. Uh, and this is of worldwide significance and the team here, the Brigham and Women's team, is working with Partners in Health and Doctors Without Borders and the health authorities of 15 nations to move forward the largest clinical trial of multi-drug regimens in treating this disease. Well, the division um, is very closely tied to Partners in Health, which is a, a not-for-profit. Uh, a number of us started uh, in the 80s, um, focused initially on Haiti. But as we came here to do our training, uh, and, and again, a number of us, um, the ties with the Brigham grew more and more strong every, every day. And then when we stayed on as faculty, um, we, we knew that this was, we needed a home here that wasn't in another division but was related to other divisions. It started small. We had, again, uh, reliably had a great deal of support from the hospital. And that allowed us to kickstart something big, which I think has had uh, direct impact in, in two dozen countries.